Hello and welcome to I-80 Sports. It's Halloween week, so we're going to be talking about NBA Halloween. We're going to be going over some monsters and players we think that represent them. Hello, everyone. Uh, like I said, this is Halloween week. We will be doing ha this Halloween theme that they've been has been happening throughout all of I eighty sports. Uh, we, the NBA's, will be doing it as well. Uh, are doing it as well. Unfortunately, Jeff and Mongo are not able to make it to this. However, they were kind enough to send us their submissions. So Kevin's going to read their submissions along with his own. Uh, I will read mine for the monsters. There's seven. Monsters. Um, so let's get started. We're going to go in order. So we're going to start with <laughs> Frankenstein's monster. Uh, Superhuman in strength and speed, this mutant freak is a combination of skill sets. This monster makes it seem as if he really is a science experiment. <laughs> so um, I picked Zion Williamson. Uh, he is a very strong, explosive player. Um the only question is, can his body hold up? I mean, just like Frankenstein monster's body, could it get it hold up? You know, it's just stitched together at this point. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's hard to argue that Zion is not a freak of nature. The guy's six six, like three hundred pounds, and can jump out of a building. Uh, unfortunately, with those measurements and size, he um, has an injury problem already in his young career. Um, hopefully, he'll be able to. Get past it. Um, so, Kevin, why don't you take us from here? You go over Mongo's, yours, and Jeff's. Short, th short thing, Mike. All right. This is Mongo's Frankenstein's monster. It's Giannis Antetokounmpo. And according to Mongo, it's not terribly close. He literally has earned the nickname with Freak in the title. After all, he is the Greek Freak. He's remiss if he'd, um, he... He's like... he He's very big, very strong, has... Gone, it's won a title this with uh with you know his uh shooting percentages from the outside not being so great, but boy can he dominate inside. So that's uh, the defense for Giannis Antetokounmpo. Uh, for my pick, my pick was LeBron James for Frankenstein's monster. So much bigger than most players, and even at a slim down six foot nine inches, two hundred fifty pounds, can still play all five positions. Incredible skill set. And believe me, you do not want to be standing outside the restricted area trying to draw a foul on this guy. On this guy, you will not and, survive it. You know the thing about LeBron, if you don't mind me, just step in real quick. Is this is LeBron at 250 in modern NBA, where a lot of bigs are, st are still going like 220 to 240. So like we're talking about a, a small forward, well, small forward, power forward, whatever you want to call him nowadays, who's 250 and has been at points almost you know, upwards of 280. That is true. But still, at the... At the at no, I mean, that, I, I think that gives credit to your, your point about yeah. how, how much of a freak athlete he really is. Oh, yeah. And he, turn, he turns 37 later this year, and boy, he is still really, really great at what he does. And we have Jeff's... We have Jeff's pick. Jeff also picked uh, the Greek Freak. Last night, or uh, I think maybe it was a couple nights ago, he had five Timberwolves covering him on a fast break. He just casually tossed it off the board, back tossed it off the backboard, and then just dunked in the dunked in the offensive rebound. Yeah, I know what he's talking about. I thought it was four, but uh, yeah, yeah, I, I do, I do, did hear about that. Um, very interesting. So we're gonna go to the next monster we have here, the werewolf. Some would call it lucky that you only see the werewolf's full power once in a full moon. This is a deadly monster that only shows up once a month. So here I picked Kristaps Porzingis. Uh, I think this is a good choice. Uh, the moment you think he's about to, uh, to be thrown to the curb... He pops back up and has a good game. And then you're like, well, see, look, this is the potential we're talking about. Um, you know, ever since his that injury that happened to him with the Knicks, you know, I think it was his second or second year with the Knicks where he, he hurt his knee or whatever. 
or foot or something. It was, has, I believe it was his knee, yes. Hasn't been the same. Uh, he has good games, but they're few and far between. And there's a lot of times where you're like, oh, I can't wait to see this guy not on my team anymore. And then all of a sudden he'll have this huge game where he'll put up like 30 and like 10 with like, you know, eight three-pointers or whatever. <laughs> You know, and you're like, well, this is clearly why he's, you know, the unicorn, right? Like, you see these games, and that's, the, you know, I mean, obviously, if that was one of the monsters we put here, uh, he would easily be the unicorn, but he is the unicorn. All right. Mongo took this to a very interesting level, my friends. Without fail, he loses a fantasy week at least once a year when Luke Kennard has his annual Huck Fest. He's clearly in that same stream as guys like Kyle Corver and Doug McDermott who have carved daily roles for years, but Kennard seems way more content to just tease us once or twice a year with how good his shot is. And you know what? He's not wrong. <laughs> Kennard, you know, has some games where he's just lighting it up, and then others you're like, ah, yeah, he's okay, shooter. He'll help you team out. My, my, my pick for the werewolf was Kyrie Irving. Very strong tendency to say controversial things, and is very well known to disappear from the team from time to time. You never know when this guy's going to show up. Except this season, he probably isn't going to show up thanks to all the COVID regulations. But that's his own doing. And even Or, e or even Kevin Durant's going to sneak into Kyrie's house and give him the shot himself. <laughs> even before, But even before COVID, he's disappeared from the time without even contacting his own teammates. Yeah, um, that whole situation is very messy. We'll talk about that on our, our, our regular episode. And uh, Jeff here, he picked Jeff Green. Um, every once in a while, you'll get a glimpse of what he could have been. And, you know, you can't really argue too much with that. Jeff Green had high ceiling and, uh, you know, he doesn't, he comes and goes. And uh, unfortunately, as part of the game, um, <laughs> you you might be great in college or good in college, you know. And then the, the speed of the of the pros is just way too much. and Or you have a major injury happen or something like this. Some, there's always something. And, boy, I, as, you know, someone who's played against, like, lower-level college basketball players um, and, like, just, I mean, like, Division three basketball players, playing against them and seeing how good they are and just – it can only I can only imagine how much better these professionals are. So it's it's just crazy to see. You know, you see these guys and then they come out. They have such hype and then they just they look they look pathetic against the pros. But really, it's just that's how good the pros really are. So let's get to the next monster here. We have on our list the mummy. Some thought he was dead, so he was wrapped up and sent off. They were sorely mistaken, as this member of the undead has m more to offer in the afterlife. It should be noted that we commonly use traded players playing well in their new home in this category. Yeah. So, Mike, who do you have as your mummy? I picked Dwight Howard. Uh, I think that uh, I've talked. I, we talked about. I talked about him a lot in the last episode for uh, NBA NBA seventy five. Top 75 team, I thought he was a snub. I still 100% agree he's a snub. Uh, Dwight may not be the same player he used to be during his prime where he was dominant, but he still can put up some big games where he'll come off, where, where he'll either start um, for an injured player or he'll come off the bench and he'll put up 25 and 14 with like five to eight blocks. And you're like, wow, how how is this guy not in the top 75 players of all time? Uh, he's just one of the best center he's the best center of his generation and i don't think there's any questions about that i completely and, i completely i completely concur mike i i was i i like dwight howard i wish he was in the uh top 75 but um hey man i'm sad i'm sad he didn't make it all right yeah. let's go to mongo's pick which is quite interesting it's, he, wanted it's very to give interesting. It, he wanted to give it collectively to the Denver Nuggets, but he did make an official pick of Aaron Gordon. They absolutely revived his career. They let him be himself in a more complimentary role. And then they literally, the Nuggets also literally ignored the bandages when they 
bravely and correctly drafted Michael Porter Jr., which has become even more important with the uh, injury to Jamal Murray. Yeah, I I loved that pick back then. I really wanted the Knicks to take that gamble um, because the, the ceiling was so high for him that it's like, well, if he does come back, we got ourselves arguably the best player in the draft. Now, he hasn't lived up to necessarily being the best player in that draft class, but he certainly is a very, very talented player. And the sky's the limit. If he can stay healthy and he can start put it piecing, you know, piecing together a bit more consistently. Yeah, I think so. And he'll he could have he could have some additional opportunities in the near future with the injury to Nikola Jokic as well. That's right. not it's not a hundred percent sure how Jokic will fare with the knee contusion, but um, you know, and I actually want to take it easy with him, especially with Murray out. So Michael Porter Jr. probably will have the green light in the near future to put up numbers. Uh, I just wanted, before I get to my pick, Mongo wanted me to mention that he thinks before Halloween 2022 that his next answer will be Victor Oladipo. So I'm, I'm curious to see how Oladipo is going to recover from his injury. Uh, um, we'll find out. Yep, we will. All right. my My person for the mummy was Derek Rose. Injuries took a toll on his body, but he seems to have found himself in a great role as a sixth man coming off the bench. Now that he's playing a little bit uh, lesser minutes, he's still flor- he's still proving that he's playing well. He's actually learned quite a few things uh, in in his uh, you know between when he was the star with the Bulls and now as the sixth man, he knows when to go and when to you know let others. Um, take the shots he knows he doesn't have to dominate every single night but he's still playing he's still playing very well as the sixth man and i gotta say i i actually thought he was done when he uh several years ago but he's back and he is playing a very big time role right now even in yeah i mean French. he would have been my uh my number two on my choice i i'm not gonna lie i did cheat a bit i did see who you posted before i wrote mine um, <laughs> And I did not, not want to have, I didn't want to have this. I didn't want us all to have the same answers. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you'll right. see later on as we continue that that does not necessarily work out. Uh, some people, it's, but you it's know. not cheating. I just wanted to put my answer up there, just in case. Just no, in no, case. I like your answer. I yeah. Dwight Howard still would have been my answer, yeah. but boy, it when I saw yours, I'm like, man, that's a real good one. Yep. Derek Rose, and he's young, he's like 32, 33, something like that. Yes. I can, and, I can look that up quickly, like, but yes. If it wasn't for that knee injury, we're talking about a guy who literally was an MVP. Who knows, this, who knows where he would be right now if it wasn't for that knee injury? Those knee injuries, right? It was both, happened back-to-back years. And just so you know, you are correct. He just turned 33 years old earlier this month. Yeah. Oh, you want to take Jeff's answer? Oh. Yeah, sure. Uh, Jeff chose uh, Kevin Durant. Uh, it's a good choice because uh, everyone thought he was going to be done after his injury a couple of years ago. Uh, last year, came back second half of the year towards the end, a little bit less than second half, um, and just dominated and dragged that, net te- that Nets team. He made them finals, made them get to the finals, and they, they looked like dominant team. Nice. Uh, I know they're struggling a bit this year. I don't necessarily – I think a lot of it has to do – which, again, we'll talk about in the regular episode. I think it has more to do with the new rules change than it does the lack of Kyrie Irving. Um, All right. But, you know, uh, I'll, I'll Durant, introduce the next one. We, uh, just, hold on. Let me finish this oh, up real quick. Kevin sorry. Durant is a really good player. Uh, let's get to the next one, which is the, the ghost. ghost. All right. The ghost. If the spirit of the deceased – Takes many takes many forms in the supernatural world. Among his best tricks, becoming invisible and popping up in the most useful places. Who is your surprise player? My surprise player is none other than Aaron Gordon. Uh, no longer the face of the franchise. He's uh, been stepping up. He's not now that he's not being asked to be the main guy. He has become such a good complimentary player for the Denver Nuggets. All right. Uh, Mongo went with Al Horford. Uh, Oklahoma City Thunder do an amazing job of burying veterans. And with Horford being iced last year, 
you forgot how useful he can be a contender. He's always been a winner, and he'll be big in Boston this year. Uh, I I think that he's a little bit premature with that based off of how he's been doing in Boston. But, you know, it is what it is. This one, I'll admit, I struggled with a little bit. But I did, I did go off the wall a little bit. I went over to the Minnesota Timberwolves and picked Anthony Edwards. He seemed to be doing a very good job in this early season for Minnesota. So I figured, why not? Yeah, I saw I saw your answer. I, I also did struggle as well. I'm like, Ugh, who to pick? Who to pick? That's why I went with Aaron Gordon. I, I I did struggle a bit with a few of these. I did just there was no direct correlation that jumped into my mind. And uh, Jeff agreed with Mongo. Not much surprise, you know. The, these all three of these are good choices. All right. Uh, I guess I can introduce the next one. Are you ready? Sure can. All right. We're now at the headless horseman. This member of the undead is searching for a command center replacement, looking every year for a head to make his own. We commonly use players who need a new head coach in this in this segment. So, Kilroy, who you yeah. got? I have Dennis Schroeder. Uh, he has the talent. It's, it's known. Um, but he seems to be a proper problem in every locker room he goes to. Maybe this year with Boston, he's finally found what he's been looking for. I It's hard to tell. He's 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 a hard person to read. He's the, he was with the defending champs last year. Wasn't satisfied there. I don't know how you're not satisfied playing with one of the best to ever play the game in LeBron James. But he wasn't. And he took less money, tried free agency, he failed turned, at it. Let's clarify. He turned down big money, tried to play free agency, and played it terribly. And yeah, he ended he up with it. only one year, like $5.9 or something like that. And, and but this year, yeah. he's got the chance to play for a much bigger contract. So Well, right now he's coming off the bench. Game. Boston's point guard situation is quite a crazy one. So who knows what's happening with that. Maybe Schroeder gets some more starts eventually. Uh, let's go to Mongo's. Okay. Uh, you want right. to get that one? He took he took Kyrie Irving. If I got these notes right, uh, it's hard to read. vaccine situation is a disaster, and Cam Thomas, an incredibly deep bench of veterans, don't seem to miss him. And to the surprise of nobody, Kyrie isn't exactly the media or people's champ with how he's handling all of this. It's no yeah. surprise to any of you guys. No. I get what he was saying. He was saying it was also like between one of two people. Um, you'll say who the second person is when it's your turn. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I, I get it. Kyrie's a bit of a problem. I just didn't, again, so I saw who you picked <laughs> again. And, and I we'll, was we'll, we'll reveal that him. in a few minutes. Don't worry. But I didn't want to pick him because I was like, well, Kevin already picked him. Um, and then Jeff picked him anyway. So what's the difference? <laughs> So my my real pick is not actually Dennis Schroeder. My real pick is Kevin's pick. And my pick is Ben Simmons. He needs out of cream cheese city in the worst way. His coach is against him. The, his best teammate is against him. He's like doing everything to sabotage his role on the team, getting himself kicked out of practice on the right before the first game. He needs out. And Jeff has added an interesting note. He also agrees with Ben Simmons. He's, he thinks uh, Ben Simmons might end up in uh, Sacramento. That'd be hilarious. He'd be so mad if that's where he ended up. <laughs> hey, man. Right. That would be so bad. They'll have like 18 point guards. Oh, okay. right, let's go to the next one we got here. I got this. All right. We've got the Scarecrow, my friends. This member of the undead is one of the oldest and most diverse human creations worldwide. It may be scary at first, but the Scarecrow's usefulness comes mostly as a decoy. So, Mike, who you got? Oh, I cheated on this. I said the Brooklyn Nets power forwards. They're bigs. Not just the power forwards, they're centers as well. Whether it's Blake Griffin, Paul Mills, uh, yeah, Paul Millsap, or the Marcus Aldridge. They are they are not who they used to be. They're, but boy, they are able to take pressure off of KD and James Harden. And boy, it's really exciting. I uh, you have to respect them because at any point they could be like how they you, they ha can have a game like how they used to. You know, Lamar Marcus Aldridge is, you know, 
one of the few players. I, I forget what his numbers, his stats are like ridiculous that he has a career. Um, he's comparably one of the top power forwards in history, surprisingly, and it, it's it, it's something that you wouldn't think of. Uh, so a player you don't think of. Uh, he quietly became one of the best. Um, he's not that guy anymore, but he's still very good. Um, Paul Millsap, boy, his time with um, Atlanta, I think it was, was when he was yes. was, he was very he was good. All star in Atlanta, you've got that fantastic. And Blake Griffin, we all know him, uh, former first overall pick, uh, jumped over a Kia car during the All Star game, uh, and you know lived up to his expectations, albeit only for a short period of time before injuries kind of slowly derailed his career. Interesting enough, it's not cheating. Hey, you had to give an answer. You had to give an answer. Mongo had an interesting answer. He also went with bigs on the Nets bench for most for many of the same reasons you went. I went a different direction with you guys. Um, I went with Chris Paul. He draw he draws a lot of attention. He's all even at his ripe old age in his late 30s, he's still penetrating the paint and he's using it just so that he can dish the ball to other teammates. You know, he's really racking up all those assist numbers, even at this late stage in his career. And, you know, that's where that's where he's the most useful to me. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Jeff agreed with me and Mongo, uh, the Brooklyn Nets power forwards. <laughs> I guess oh, I, I guess this the, I guess the theme in here is the Brooklyn Nets are a big Halloween team fan. I mean, if you really look at our answers, though, there's a surprisingly large amount of Brooklyn Nets, especially <laughs> for Knicks fans and <laughs> a, a Boston Celtic fan. All right, yeah. let's get on to the final monster we got here. I got this. We go now to the skeleton. This member of the undead skips all the frills and flesh to provide a more bare bones approach. This Halloween favorite is great at fighting above his weight class. So who you got, Mike? Who you got, Mike? So I picked the. Uh, I. I mean, I don't know. I, this was this was actually tough for me. I'm like, I. I, I don't know. I, this this. I and just we have all player. different answers here. Just so you. Just so they you are all very yeah. different. Very I was, different. I, I was thinking at points. I was like maybe Stephen Adams, but he there's who there's not really people above him. He's just a dirty player. Um, <laughs> okay, that's interesting. I went with Draymond Green. Um, he's not as good as he was when he was younger, uh, but he still, you know, plays hard. He can play. He's under so undersized for the four, but he still plays it against some of the bigger guys. He, I, he's he's dirty, but he'll fight you hard, and he'll make he'll make you, he'll make it tough on you. You want this guy on your team, but you don't yeah. want to play against this guy because he'll get really under your skin, better than a submarine. I mean, Mongo's pick is arguably just as as annoying. More Mongo's pick is way dirtier, I think, than Draymond Green. Um, Mongo went with Patrick Beverly. When he isn't starting a fight, he's only somehow contributing to a team making the playoffs every single season. Shades of 90, 1990s players like Reggie Miller, who would use defensive agitation as a very effective weapon. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very accurate. Hard to disagree with that. My 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 player is along the same lines. Mr. P.J. Tucker. This is a good this pick. This player routinely battles bigger, stronger ball handlers. Kevin Durant is not amused by this uh, pick and always finds a way to draw frustration from them. I mean, you might score, you might score 40, 50 points, but you are going to feel it when you play against P.J. Tucker. Uh, Jeff pick Marcus Smart. Always in the mix, doesn't mess around. Good choice. You know, if this if we were using older players, which we could have chosen players who no longer are playing, you know, a good pick here would have been um, Tony Allen. I think that was his name for with um, he was with uh, Memphis, Memphis and Boston, and that guy was like a shutdown defender. He was hard as nails. Um, obviously, Dennis Rodman would be a good choice. Yes, you know, uh, pretty much the whole uh, Detroit Pistons team. I think another 90s. one. Oh, no, I've got another name for you for retired players that would fit the skeleton. Bruce Bowen. Yep, Bruce Defensive Bowen would be great. No, also knocks down three-pointers like crazy. But the funny thing is, he couldn't shoot from the free throw line. So this was this was an interesting uh, player that I thought would have fit from for the skeleton. 
And yeah, I mean, my uh, goodness, you know. he was cheap and dirty as heck on the Heat, and then later on the Spurs. And as a we, Knicks fan in the '90s, you knew about Bruce Bowen. Yeah, I mean, we we chose to go with current players for all of our picks. We could have mixed it up. Um, I'm glad we didn't. But anyway, thank you all so much. Um, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. You can catch more episodes of I80 Sports Halloween. Um, you can go on to our YouTube channel. Uh, and we'll catch you guys next time where we're going to go back to talking uh, about the season uh, week two recap.